In today's video, I'm going to show you how to very quickly paint zombies for Mantix The Walking Dead. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a very simple way to paint zombies for Mantix The Walking Dead. This isn't aimed at pro painters, this is really aimed at first time painters and people just getting started. So I'm going to try and take you through it as easy as I can. So here you can see I've got the miniatures and I've just put sand on their bases. So what I've used is PVA glue and some modeling sand. You can use kind of any sand, children's play sand or even just any kind of sand really. Uh, once that's set overnight, we get on to the next stage. So here you can see now that I've primed the miniatures. I've used my airbrush to prime these and I've used Vallejo Ghost Grey, but you can use a, a spray can. Uh, I personally like to to spray mine a very light colour and this just makes some of the colours seem a bit brighter but you can use whatever colour you've got, uh, black, grey or white. Here I'm using uh, Thrall Flesh from uh, Privateer Press but you could use sort of like a Nurgle uh, Flesh colour. It's basically kind of a yellowy, greeny, creamy colour and this is what we're going to be doing the zombie flesh with. Here you can see I'm using a, a wet palette so I'm just putting a little bit on the palette, mixing with a little bit of water to get the right consistency. Next stage is we just paint that paint all over the what would be the zombie flesh. So face, hands, arms, feet, legs, that kind of thing. And just put it on nice and thin. Don't, don't put it on too thick. Just put it on nice and thin. And don't worry too much about being overly neat as we are going to wash the miniature over later with a, um, with a brown wash and that will hide a multitude of sins. Paint this skin onto all of the zombies that you're painting. So in this set, from one of the expansions i've got four zombies in it uh, so just paint it all over the skin and then we're ready to move on to the next stage next stage is just to pick out your your base colors here i'm using uh, a cantor blue from games workshop just to paint uh, a blue suit and you the best thing to do is to try and pick a slightly lighter or slightly brighter color that you would normally because by the time we've put the washes over the top it really darkens it down the walkers in The Walking Dead are always very dirty and very grimy and that's the look we're going for. It also just happens to be a very simple way to paint them. So once you've blocked in all of your colours, so on this particular model, the suit, the shirt, the tie, his, his boots, go on and do the rest of the models with whatever colours you want. Remember, don't be frightened to be a little bit brighter than you would normally because we're really going to darken it down with the washers. And here you can see the four models. This probably demonstrates a little bit better about what I mean about brighter colours. So the greens, the pinks, the blues, the orange, all seem a little bit bright at the moment, but I promise you when it's finished, it will look great. So the next stage now is we're going to take an Agrax Earthshade Wash, again from Games Workshop, and we're just going to very liberally brush it all over the model. We're not trying to just do little pin washes, we're not just trying to get into the um, sort of recesses. What we're trying to do is really make these zombies look dirty and grimy, like they've been climbing around on the ground for weeks on end. So just sort of very liberally um, painted all over the model and then once you've been right the way over just go over with the brush and try and dab it where it's a little bit heavy in places so you can see on this particular one around some of the creases around the kind of the cardigan and around the back of the neck it gets very thick just use just dry your brush off on a piece of kitchen towel and then just sort of use the brush to, to wick it away from the model then what you do once you've done all of that model, leave it to dry. You can either just leave it to dry for a, an hour or so, or what I'd like to do is use a hairdryer on a very low setting that just kind of uh, dries it and doesn't blow the, the wash around, but just dries it very quickly. The next stage is to do exactly the same thing again. So the first wash, you can see it's really flattened out and it's dulled down a little bit. It's taken some of the brightness from them colors. What we want to do is to make it even dirtier and even more grimy. So again, very liberally, just brush it all over um, try not to get too many really thick pieces where it's for, sort of pooled very heavily. However, if you do get anything, it just looks like sort of dirty watermarks on the model, especially with it being a zombie. I wouldn't recommend doing it if you were painting your sort of your survivors or characters, unless you were wanting to look, yeah, unless you were wanting them to look very dirty. But on this one, uh, this is exactly the kind of look we're going for. So again, once you've done that, do it with all of the other zombies as well. And this is what they look like. So you can really see that those bright colours have really flattened down. They look dirty, they look grimy. It's picked up some of the creases in the clothes, so it's creating a shading as well. However, it, what it's not done is it's not um, made it look 
overly dirty. So for example, the white on the shirt, it still looks like it's been a white shirt, it's just dirty. Next stage is just to get white on the edge of your brush and just, just dot in the eyes. What this does, it just makes the eyes pop a little and instead of it looking very sunken and kind of um, sort of very flat, it just gives a little bit of focus to the walker's face. I find it easier to turn it upside down as well and come in from the right hand side and do the other eye, but you can do it however you want. Next up is, I've used a cone red here. It's probably a bit bright if I'm honest. You might either want to use a, um, a darker red or sort of mix a little bit of brown into it, but just to use it for blood. So put a little bit around the mouth as if he's been chewing away on some, uh, on some survivors, a little bit down his collar where it's sort of dribbled down, a bit onto his, um, his leg of his trousers where it's dripped down, and certainly around the hands where they would have been clawing and sort of pulling away at the bodies. And you can just put them a little bit where you want as if it's been splashed around back of the leg or up on the shoulder as well. Again, do that across all of your walkers, uh, but please don't overdo it. Less is definitely more in this instance. Next up is, I'm using Tamiya Clear Red Paint. Now, I know you can use Blood for the Blood God, which is a, a Citadel Games Workshop paint. I've never used it before, so I can't comment on how, how it looks. However, however, I've always used this Tamiya Clear Red. It gives a really kind of gloopy, shiny um, effect to the blood. And certainly if you do it just over the clothes or over a very much darker red, it's a lot less, um, sort of a lot less bright. Here, this is probably a little bit bright, but I want you to, to really see it on camera. Next up is we're going to paint the base. Now I've used a dark gray here. This is an old Games Workshop paint I'm using. I think it's an Adapters Battle Gray, but you just use whatever colors you like that will match your board or whatever you want to do. I'd suggest just the dark gray if you want to make it look like tarmac, um, but whatever paints you have. Just make sure that you really get into the, all the little sort of the grooves between the sand. Uh, use a little bit of water just to help it flow. Uh, the more watery it is, you may have to do a couple of coats, however, it will flow better between the sand. Once you've done that, the next stage is to use a black wash, and we're just gonna very liberally again, just paint over the base of the model and just get some sort of um, some depth to that to make, to make it look a lot darker. So just using a black wash, again, very liberally, all over the top of that gray um, sanded base. Try not to get down the sides, because it's just wasted really, uh, but then that will uh, give some depth. Again, leave it to dry, either with a hairdryer or just kind of give it a couple of hours because with it being the sand as well, it does soak up. Next up after that is we're going to do something called dry brushing. So all you're going to do is take a lighter gray, I've got a Dawnstone gray here, get some on your dry brush, just brush most of it off onto a paper towel so it's very fine and then just very uh, lightly just drag it across the top of the base. All you're trying to do is pick up on the, the high edges of the sand. Um, so with the gray base, the black wash, and the, a lighter gray top, it gives it a very three-dimensional effect. The last stage is just to paste, paint the rim of the base, and I'm just using um, a, a bad and black, I think it is now. Um, so I'm just using black paint just to paint around the edge of the base. Try and keep it nice and neat so you don't go up onto the sand uh, and the textured base. And just go all the way around all of your bases and this is them done now completely finished uh, again i would say it's tabletop quality but it's very easy and uh, there's no highlighting there's no kind of very fine detail it's perfect for anyone just getting started or anyone who just wants to paint kind of board game miniatures and this really does look effective on the table don't forget it looks much bigger on your screen here these models are sort of 25 millimeters high and you'll be looking at them from two feet away kind of arm's length so if you're just starting out and you're a little bit daunted by all of these fantastic paint jobs, go for something like this. And with a very quick paint job, before you know it, you've built up a whole army of walkers ready to come and chomp away at your survivors. In a future video, I'll be showing you how to paint the survivors and we'll take a little bit more care with some of those and I'll show you how to do a bit of a highlight as well. However, this has just been a very simple video to try and show everyone that don't be daunted and don't be put off by trying to paint your miniatures. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.